Hello and welcome to this lore discussion playthrough of at least the first part of the 2012 masterpiece from Arcane Studios, Dishonored. Dishonored is my absolute favorite game, and the only one I still play at my advanced age, mostly for nostalgia purposes. There are a lot of let's plays and first time playthroughs of this game on YouTube, but this one's a bit different. This is going to be kind of a running commentary on the background lore and history of the world of Dishonored. Uh, with some details that a casual gamer might not pick up on a first or even a second playthrough. So, let's get started. Once you've played this enough times, it doesn't matter what the difficulty is if you know where to go and what to do. You've just returned from a journey of several months visiting the other nations in the Empire to ask for aid in dealing with the Rat Plague. You must deliver their diplomatic response to the Empress whom you serve as Lord Protector. Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else, and the Spymaster was right to insist Believe it or not, this, that I send you. This voice actress uh, for the Empress is April Stewart, who the also voices Cartman's so mom on South Park. Find a cure. So when just try unhearing here, that. My heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. I've read that the uh, developers originally had planned to set this game in 17th century London, or Victorian London, or even, I think, Japan. Uh, luckily, they decided to set it in its own world with its own rich history and magic system, but you can still clearly see the historical influences they drew from. Um, also from the old Thief games and Half-Life 2, which some of the developers worked on previously. Lord Corvo has news for the Empress, and we've come a long way. A long way to bring bad news. The sailors say there's a curse on us. Black magic. Superstition. For all we know, there's a cure for the plague by now. Maybe. We live in strange times. Sending the Empress's bodyguard away for a couple of months. That's unusual. Well, this was important. We need help with the rat plague. So this game is set in a fictitious world in a place called the Empire of the Isles, and it has four main islands going from north to south, Tivia, Morley, Bristol, where we are now, and its capital city oh, Dunmore, and Circonos. There were four independent nations about 200 years before this, but were forcibly unified by the War of Four Crimes. Morley resisted uh, this most violently. About 30 some years before this game actually launched an unsuccessful insurrection to regain their independence. The Empire is ruled by an emperor or empress who were monarchs of Bristol before the War of Four Crowns. When King Finlay Morgengard IV became Emperor Finlay Morgengard I. There have been three dynasties before the current reigning Caldwin dynasty. And the previous Olaskir dynasty ruled for almost a hundred years before dying out without an heir. Or rather, they were assassinated without an heir. You know what to do next time? Yes, yes. The pressure was Empress too Jesse low. Empress Jessamine's father, Yuhorn, was the first Caldwin Emperor, so their dynasty is not Just so firmly established at this crazy. point. Sokolov's changed everything again. We don't know what the hydraulics can do now. We've got him here today doing a portrait. If there's a time to try something, it's now. So the game is set in the year 1837 of the World's Own Calendar. And you can see the early industrial state of the city matches relatively well with the real world. And the calendar dates from a mysterious event called the Great Burning. A massive cult burned and destroyed many of the cities of the Isles. The, the event's mostly been scrubbed from history and no one knows a whole lot about it. So the industrial level of the Empire is a relatively recent thing resulting from technological breakthrough involving harvesting whale oil. You can see a whaling ship there. Uh, a generation before this it would have been made entirely of wood, but now it's more of a thing of steel. You can see those beams on top for holding and hauling whales off to slaughterhouses so that oil can be harvested. In the real world, whale oil was used before petroleum was discovered, mostly for lighting lamps. I've heard that it actually smells pretty bad when you burn it. In this world, the whale oil is much more energetic and magical. So you can see Cold Ridge Prison there. Uh, 
and the palace, Dunwall Tower. Not quite sure what the, uh, the thinking is of putting a prison right next to a palace. I mean, I guess they're going for a kind of Tower of London type thing, but uh, it's not a prison for, like, royal prisoners or anything. It's just a regular prison, so I don't know. So here we Hello, encounter sir. a City Watch officer. They're the main NPC in the game. Officers wear the blue jackets with the red, uh, I guess, waistcoats. Some more views of the city. And we come to our first triggered cutscene here. Corvo, you're back! Emily Caldwell, voiced by Chloe Moretz. Tell me about your trip, please. Were there any whales? We Wait, start to see the importance of whales in this case. I'll cover my eyes and you hide. You have time? Mother's busy talking to that nasty old spy master. Always play hide and seek with him. Okay, here we go. Did you see any monsters while traveling to the other isles? You know, the my blue name banner of the big oceans full of Caldwin Dynasty. And I think she only says that to scare me. Done all ten more again. Follow me, Corvo. Another watch officer. There's an interesting detail. These uh, these trees that have been sort of blown back by wind coming off the river. I don't know how realistic this is. Um, the city is actually four miles upriver from the coast, so I'm not sure if there's there would be enough wind to blow the trees back like that, but it's a nice detail. Another view of the, uh, the Renhaven River here. And in the distance, you can just make out the lighthouse at uh, King Sparrow Island. This lighthouse was built to defend the city against rebels from Moli during the, the Moli insurrection I mentioned previously. Let's see if you're so good at this. I'll hide my eyes and count, and at the end of the countdown, I'll try and find you. Okay, I'm going to count to ten. Find a place to hide. One of the nice things about this game is um, it builds a lot of the tutorial directly into the gameplay and the story. So you learn as you play the game. You don't have to exit it into some special tutorial level. Six. Just showing you how to do basic stealth. Here I come. It's amazing, just crouching down makes you 80% less visible. I don't think it works that way in real life. Here? See some smokestacks in the distance. Probably burning plague dead. Here. There are a lot of plague dead. Okay, you win. We should go now, so Mother can see you too. Uh... Let's go! Come on! This area used to be a moat before they had the water lock. Welcome home, Lord Protector. That is Campbell, High Overseer. Stop moving, Campbell. And you, Corvo, welcome back. In the Anton Soko. Wherever you've been. They sent him all around the Isles to beg for aid. A waste of time. My elixir will banish the plague from this city. Now keep still a moment, High Overseer Campbell. I'm not so sure that painting looks like Campbell. No, I think it does. I mean, I'm no art critic, but it looks like it. Here's a fun thing you can do. You can come over here, take this bottle of cider. What are you doing? I need the bottle to draw the eye away from Campbell. I suppose I can paint him without the cider. Though in truth, he is always close to this stuff. Come around here, and you actually can encounter this painting again later in the game. And if you take that bottle, and you see the painting next, the bottle will be gone. He'll have painted it out. I don't know why he does this. He doesn't. I mean, he's already painted it. He doesn't need to paint it out. But just interesting detail. I saw my improvements to the water lock. 
I must preserve our high overseer for future generations of the faithful to So that's kind of a genius renaissance man. He's a painter. I leave the worst parts of him in physician, the shadow, but still. Scientist, inventor. See what I'm forced to paint. The high overseer is no beauty. In this painting, I insult my own genius. Not a very humble guy. I do my duty for the realm, but not gladly. It was a fool's errand, Corvo. The plague comes from inside us. We must all strengthen our faith. I oversee No foreigner I can must save us from the consequences of a corrupt society. No fancy elixirs, either. Remember. Yeah, they don't every like man foreigners his choice, in Bristol. To every man his so Koloff is actually uh, from Say Judea. What you will. This plague has brought but he's a special case to our doors. Remember, to every man his choice, to every man his fate. Should we gather? She'll see you at once. <coughs> so, interesting thing about these guns. Um, if you look on the side, they actually kind of look like 17th century wheel locks. Uh, but they're not. They're they're guns that fire bullets, cartridges. Um, but the cartridge is uh, powered by whale oil inside, so the whale oil ignites and propels the bullet. It's been good traveling with you, Corvo. <clears throat> Have you ever met my niece Callista? She's getting more beautiful every year. <clears throat> I'll be happier back with the watch. I'm no diplomat. He's the only Strange. member of the city watch who's not corrupt. Cliff. It's too early. The in only year. one in the city. I hope we're not fools to come back here. The plague's only getting worse. <clears throat> Something Dunwall Tower was uh, kind of based on the Tower of London. You get your own back when it was a what happened last night? Palace, not a prison. Good. <sighs> They're sick people, not criminals. We've gone beyond that question, Your Majesty. They're... They're my citizens, and we will save them from the plague if we can. All of them. Very well. We will not save You hear what I mean? That's Cartman's mom. Mother, Corvo is back. Thank you, Emily. Leave us, please. As you wish, Your Majesty. Corvo. Two days early. Full of surprises, as usual. It's Hiram Burroughs, the royal spymaster. Definitely not a villain. <laughs> it's a fair Follow wind me, that brings you home to me. What news have you brought? We'll, we'll pause here, um, talk a little bit about uh, Jessamine, so she's the empress. She's been empress for about 12 years at this point. She inherited uh, the throne from her father, Ewan Jacob Caldwin who, as I mentioned, was the first Caldwell Emperor. Uh, he, he came to power in 1803 of this world after the, uh, as I said, the previous Empress, Larissa Oliskir, was assassinated during the Moli Insurrection. And at this point, they just had no, no other heir to take over. So after about a year or two of regency, Yuhorn Caldwin was declared emperor, elected emperor, um, kind of as a second choice. There was just no one else, uh, no one else to do it. Uh, you see the uh, clock tower in the distance. There, this uh, clock tower is visible from most parts of the city. We never get to go there for some reason. It's very frustrating. Even in the second game, we don't get to go there. Uh, Remap some buttons so I keep jumping when I want to activate. I hope that one of the other cities had dealt with this before, knew of some cure. This news is very bad. We're at the breaking point. Cowards. Little bug. They're going to blockade us. They'll wait to see if the plague turns the city into a graveyard. Are you okay, Mother? Sounds familiar. You seem sad. Yes, don't worry, darling. Mother is fine. Wait, where are the guards? And now we have our... We sent them away. Mother, look! Assassin What are they doing on the rooftop? What? Emily, come here! Emily, get behind me! 
these assassins are the whalers. They wear um, filter masks that actual whale butchers wear when uh, working around the whale waste. Corvo, thank you. If you hadn't been here... No more! Not again! Mommy! No! Get away There's from Dowd, here! Voiced eventually no. by uh, Michael oh, Madsen. Mommy. Protect her. You're the only one. You'll know what to do. Won't you? Corvo. It's kind of lazy. The uh, characters just kind of spawn right in during the cutscene there. Ward us all. Look at what he's done. Yes, he's killed the Empress. What did you do with young Lady Emily, traitor? Her own bodyguard. Ironic. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. Take him. Is there a title screen? And we have spent six months in Cold Ridge Prison, the time of our execution draws near. But there's still time for some last minute torture. Notice the uh, blue banners have now been replaced by Red. Sign the confession and let me give you the rights to put your spirit. Spy master has now become the Lord Regent. Ah, this torture is actually named Morris Sullivan. He's a bit uh, slow in the head as a result of uh, inbreeding from the wealthy family the he comes from. Time to think, Corvo, the Empress is dead. Her daughter Emily is hidden away, and no one will ever know the truth. Yes, unlucky you. Tomorrow you'll be executed, but it's for a good cause. Well, well, it's for a good cause. You need strong leadership now, someone to guide the weak. And that's where we come in. There was nothing personal in this, even though you almost sank our plans. But it turned out well. You were in the wrong place at the right time, and someone has to take the fall. Goodbye, Corvo. Notice the painting there. God! Take this guy has paintings yourself. of himself all over this game. You should eat, Corvo. This meal comes from a friend. So here we are in the. Uh, in our cell in Cold Ridge. Right, we have control again. And we look around at our cell. Here's some nice graffiti. A little fire that warms is better than a big fire that burns. And this toilet, some, some water. Don't think I want to drink it though. Here's the execution yard. Uh, we don't actually get to go there in this game. We do in the DLC though. Start with innocence, but the world leads us to guilt. Not very profound, but it's a prison, not a university. Did you say your sister was? Bug someone else. Fred. Everyone loves the eating sound. On this message, Corvo, who we are is irrelevant right now. Just know that we have faith in you. Here's the key to your cell. Once you're out, head for the prison's interrogation room. Take the explosive there and plant it on the outer door. When the bomb goes off, run. Make for the river and lose yourself in the sewers. You'll find some useful gear stashed there. One of the prison guards will leave a weapon just outside your cell. And good luck. We need you alive and well for what's to come, a friend. Alright, so we got our key. <clears throat> and we're out of the cell. There's another wing. Some money. So I said how Burroughs likes to put his picture on everything. He actually put his face on the money, even though he's only a regent. So many people are coming to the execution tomorrow. It's on account of Corvo, the one who killed the Empress and abducted her daughter, Emily. So it's an occasion. Right. A social event for the high and mighty. 
Come see the noble Lord Protector get his head chopped off. They're as bad as us betting on the dogfight. Attention. The solitary wing is off limits to Yoink. maintenance crews unless accompanied by an officer of the watch. Escort through the solitary wing must be scheduled in advance with one week's notice. Blow off. Probably gonna try and just uh, sneak by guards when I can and avoid them, knock them out. No, no, Since this is more of a, a lore playthrough. Here, guards whistling. What will we do with the drunken whaler instead of sailor in this case? So these swords coming up are interesting. The design is uh, pretty historically based. They look a lot like uh, sort of Italian Renaissance military swords, not rapiers, but uh, the heavier military swords. The design is pretty much exactly the same. And totally not wheel lock gun again. Climb up here. See some advertisements. Hound pits. Dog fighting. Yep, they love their dog fighting in this game. Some uh, potted whale meat. Very tasty. Enough elixir. Brined hagfish. Sounds nice. Uh, so hagfish in this game are basically the same as slaughterfish in the Elder Scrolls. Um, hagfish are a real fish. It's, it's a real world fish, but they don't look like they do in this game. They're kind of a, a deep water fish. I don't think people really eat them. Some more money. Um, it's funny, the currency in this game, it's just called coin. So 50 coin. Keeps it simple. Jellied Eels. Another one of these sort of Victorian inspired pieces of food. Uh, disgusting. Um, not eel. Eel's fine, but uh, jellied anything sounds disgusting to me. But it's, uh, it's what they eat. Chance you'll share your food with me tonight? Keyhole. So you'll notice uh, different levels of uh, watch guards. You saw the officer. This guy is a regular guard. He's got some armor on, so he's a little, little bit tougher, a little bit higher ranking. And then the the lowest base level NPC enemies, the the lower guard, they were the uh, the olive drab. They're the easiest to uh, to defeat. Love the aesthetic of this game, the uh, things like that, advertisements that have been worn off, gives it a little bit more sense of realism. Uh, even though the game has a kind of a an oil painting look to it, uh, it works well with uh, within the aesthetic of the game. Whale oil tax. Each island in the Empire has its own uh, military organization, and in Gristol there are three branches of the armed forces. There's the Army, the Navy, and the City Watch. And I think except for two or three characters, you only run into the City Watch. Army wears uh, red coats, and the Navy Attention. wear blue coats Solitary with gray waistcoats underneath. Unless accompanied by an officer of the wall. Escort to the solitary wing must be scheduled in advance with one. He's a uh, bust of Benjamin Holger, founder of the Abbey of the Everyman, which we'll learn more about in a bit. Interrogation room. There's that painting again. It's actually a smaller snippet of a larger painting that you see throughout the game, and I actually have a printout of it, canvas prints. Very nice looking, I have it on my wall. I'm a bit obsessed. <laughs> a 
Duty Officer's reports. Corvo Atano, formerly the Royal Protector, will be brought in for interrogation. This is of utmost importance. The Lord Regent and High Overseer Campbell will conduct the questioning themselves. Follow their orders without hesitation. Keep the torturer under control. If Corvo dies in his hands, instead of getting the public execution the Lord Regent wants, it'll be your head that rolls next. Play the audiograph. Corvo's unconscious again. Though he's taken more punishment than in two men we brought in for interrogation. When he wakes, we'll start again. Having him sign the confession for her murder isn't critical, but it might be useful to us later. <clears throat> the assassination of an empress is not a trivial matter. Models, you can throw his distractions. Come to our safe, which is not locked for some reason, even though it's got a high explosive inside it. And now we come to our first bit of uh, in-game lore. These books show up throughout the game, and uh, they actually will show up even after you've already read one, which annoys a lot of players. Uh, this one is the Trials of Aptitude. Uh, once a child shows the proper inclination, he is marked. Overseers are assigned to study the subject surreptitiously in order to determine whether this inclination is supported by cosmological conditions and other signs ongoing throughout the year. At the end of the cycle, those befitting further testing are removed from their homes some hours before dawn and must begin the march to an outpost outside the city. There, children undergo ritual preparation and evaluation until the last night of the month of rain, where they make a pilgrimage to Whitecliff. During an elaborate ceremony, it is determined which of the children will become overseers and which must be put down. So that tells you a bit about the, about the abbey and the, uh, the overseers. So the abbey of the everyman is the uh, dominant religion, it's the only allowed religion um, in, this, uh, in this empire. They're basically like militant uh, uh, inquisition types, um, searching out heresy and, and black magic. So you learn a little bit about the abbey here, um, based in a, a city called Whitecliff, which is um, a little bit to the east of, of Dunwall, still on the island of Bristol. Uh, the calendar in this game has 13 months, and each, each month is named after some characteristic of that month. So. There's the month of rain. There's probably a lot of a lot of rain. So the abbey is um, interesting. They they're a religion without a god, but they do have a devil. Uh, they have strictures, which we'll we'll encounter later. Sort of like a seven deadly sins type of thing. Uh, and some years before this, they basically forcibly conquered all, all other um, religions in, in the empire um, and gathered all of their enemies to a place called White Cliff, which they besieged. They called it the Siege of White Cliff and just kind of wiped them all out, leaving only them as the official religion. And there's actually a special wing of cells in this prison, heresy cells, where... Um, People Unless accused of practicing black magic are taken. Uh, we don't get to uh, we don't get to visit it. Sorry, not yet. I was gonna report that boiler leak from yesterday. Forget it. Just do your rounds. The reports trouble from both of us. I'm moving. So there in the corner, we can see our first glimpse of whale oil. So that's what's in those those tanks there. It's got this glow to it. Um, so these boxes I'm sneaking around are actually hound cages. So you can imagine they use hounds to hunt down uh, people who are fleeing, but they probably also have their own dogfights here in this yard. Corvo's execution is tomorrow, right? Yeah, but everything has to be set up today. I can't wait to see his head roll. Sneak behind here. Not everyone did, but I really like the episode. Attention. Tomorrow's execution will be restricted to the personnel assigned to the event and approved dignitaries only. 
they see some shadow to let us know where the uh, where the guard is. So if you want to go past this area without really engaging, you can just kind of climb up here and sneak past. Not a lot of people that I've seen know about it. Here's the uh, this loudspeaker where all those announcements are coming from. A lot of the technology you see in this game is the invention of uh, one of two guys, uh, Sokoloff, which we saw before, a guy named Edmund Roseborough, which uh, probably spent some time talking about uh, a little bit later. It's nice that you automatically loot uh, anybody that you choke out and pick up. Makes it a little bit more convenient. It's always hard to gauge what their uh, their vision cone is. If they're going to see you if you jump down behind them. But um, all right, now to plan our explosive. Control for that uh, that big door there. We'll leave it closed. It's going to open on its own soon enough. Get some of these, these snacks here. Some conveniently placed cover. You got a a dumpster on one side and the cage on the other. So we'll go in here. Wait for the explosive to do its thing. And go. Jump into the water as the drawbridge bridge raises, you can see. And go right into the sewer. And if you linger at this spot, the guards will actually come in and chase you. And they respawn indefinitely, so you could kill as many as you want. They'll just keep coming. Alright, we have reached the sewers. And the sewers actually provided a little bit of the initial motivation to make this video because one little bit of lore that I found fascinating was that um, during the, uh, the Morley insurrection that I that I mentioned uh, the uh, rebels actually used these sewers underneath the city to move around so they could come up and, and strike anywhere they wanted which led to eventually the assassination of Empress Larissa Oleskir um, and eventually the election of Yuhorn Caldwin. Uh, this tunnel system, this sewer system, actually got started before that uh, when the um, wealthy estate owners wanted to have a, uh, a secret way of moving from one estate to the other without uh, going out in public and being seen by, by the peasants, I guess. So they had these these sewer tunnels installed underneath their estates. Um, this became very fashionable and became very common. So uh, these tunnels kind of expanded and expanded and eventually they started intersecting with each other. So this led to uh, what would become the Dunwall sewer system. And a lot of the tunnels have been sort of blocked off, especially after the Morley Insurrection, uh, to prevent uh, criminals and peasants and other undesirables from going, going through. But uh, there are still a few areas uh, open to us. My friend, Corvo, if you're reading this, it means our plan worked and you've broken free from Coldridge. One of our contacts has hidden weapons for you somewhere deeper in the sewers. Grab the gear and find Samuel, where these tunnels dump out into the river. He will bring you to us. My friend, we will meet you soon. Chris mentioned the Bottle Street Gang. Some jelly deals. Telling us about our own character. And then we see our first introduction to the rats and what they can do to, uh, to people. There they go. Pretty 
pretty uh, graphic depiction of what they'll do. They'll chew you down to the bone, and then they'll eat the bone. There was nothing left. So don't make the rats angry. Down. Fortunately, this door is locked, and rats cannot climb through those bars for some reason. See some more graffiti here. No one will keep us from death. You cannot kill the rat plague. And you even see uh, street signs underneath the streets. So it tells us what street is uh, up above. Apparently rats are eating our babies. See some more rats. This time they can get to us, so we'll avoid them. cannot swim in this game. And we come across our first plague victim corpses. Damien's journal. Amanda and I only had enough coin to buy half the elixir we needed. Even that's all gone now. There's nothing to do but wait. We're very sick and there's no place above to hide from the city watch. They're breaking into houses all over our district. So we'll stay here and share the last hours together. Our fire will keep the rats away, but they'll inherit the city. Damien. So you can see uh, you got multiple uh, hazards in the city, not just the plague, but the city watch. And uh, plague victims will often come down here just to uh, to die, to try and wait things out. Hope they'll get better, but only one in 10,000 do. Take this corpse, block in the crank wheel. Excuse me. There's little uh, power-ups and loot and and food hidden all throughout these little nooks and crannies in the game. I don't think anyone's actually found every last piece. Maybe a few have, but most don't. Note the sign, no dumping loud. Drains to the river. we supposed to load the bodies into carts headed to the flooded district? Yeah, but screw that. That's too far. And I don't want to catch the plague, do you? No. But doesn't the elixir prevent it? Maybe. Either way, let's just jump them down there. Let the rats eat them. It's a very uh, Victorian sense of sanitation. You can see why the plague spreads uh, so easily. They dump the bodies, the rats eat the bodies, they reproduce and spread the plague even more. Never noticed how many dog cages there are in this uh, game. Throw the corpse, distract the rats. So we can get to our crank wheel. Attention, Dunwall citizen. The assassin Corvo. Responsible for the murder of our fair empress and the disappearance of Lady Emma. walks in on us. Has temporarily escaped state custody. Rats human. Delicious. Hard to believe even these people would would eat a rat skewer knowing that they carry the plague. Even if it's cooked, I don't know. But we'll eat it anyway. Now we come to our first trap here. We've got a little trip wire there. Some copper wire. A rotten pear, which we apparently will still eat. So we're going to go around this little trap here, go up above. And come down behind and get some loot. Cindy bolt. One nice thing is that um, loot's instantly converted to uh, money in this game. So you don't have to go through all the uh, 
the deal of selling things like you do in, in Elder Scrolls, that kind of thing. Let's see if I can jump over this. Nope. Oh well. They don't hurt too bad. I mean, it's really just to, to teach you about about the existence of the traps, so... Come up over here. Loot this one. Bottle Street. We'll visit that on the top side in the next mission. Hemlock Essence? I don't know what they use that for. Rat Poison, maybe? Candles. This weird obsession with blowing out all the candles, I find. It doesn't do anything, it's just a thing to do. Lord Regent is a shriveled prick and a liar. Well, that's true. At least halfway true, as far as we know. So here's our loot, our gear. Greetings, Corvo, or should I say Lord Protector, as you are known before that title was wrongfully taken from you. We are servants of the Empire, the true Empress, a group of loyalists who want very much to meet you. Take these weapons, crafted for you of the finest materials in the Isles, and meet with our man Samuel, here where these tunnels spill into Renhaven River. All haste and luck. We share a common purpose. And here's our gear. A couple of things. This uh, little handheld crossbow. And this weird sword with this blade that kind of unfolds, flips out. Um, people have tried to make this uh, this sword in real life, like a you know, as a prop. It's basically impossible. It, it it can't fold out like that and be any longer than the handle, um, and it's it's structurally not really very sound. So it's one of those things that you just kind of have to accept it as part of the game. Uh, and then this uh, crossbow. Uh, so these little handheld crossbows, they're 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 real things. They exist, uh, and they're called balustrinos, and they were kind of popular as sort of uh, executive toys in the uh, Italian Renaissance. And uh, a guy on YouTube named uh, Todd Cutler, he he crafts medieval weapons and movie props. He made one of these. I think he made it um, and tested it out. And the thing is, they work, but they're not powerful enough to actually be an effective weapon. So it'll it'll shoot a bolt, but it won't be with enough power to actually kill you. Um, it'll it might pierce the skin, but um, it won't kill you. So my uh, game minimized there for a second. Let me just slice that out. Let's, see. Let's continue on. See if we can slide underneath this little trip wire here. Zoop. It's a nice little mechanic. You don't really use it very often. And now we come to Jelly's Share. Jelly, in case you're too daft to remember, look to your whiskey for the answer. Whiskey, got it? If you want your share, you'll sort it out. If not, come back for it next month. Here's the safe. We've got to figure out the combination. Not too hard. Right ahead of us. Look to your whiskey. There's the whiskey sign. And behind the bottles is the combination. Four, five, one. And um, so a lot of people will assume this is just a reference to the book Fahrenheit 451. And it might be, but more uh, specifically, this is the door code. Uh, for Looking Glass Studios, where a lot of the arcane developers got their start making the Thief games. Um, so it's kind of a tradition that in many of their games, the first safe you encounter, uh, 451 will be the combination. So here's a little piece of loot, a jewel box, a moray jewel box. So this is kind of an interesting little bit of lore. A lot of the loot in this game is kind of associated with artifacts that had belonged to sort of uh, famous families, aristocratic families, that have since maybe fallen on hard times. So here's one family, the Mores, uh, Inchmouth, 
Carmine. A couple, couple other ones. So you'll see these little bits of loot, like the jewel box, a war medal, um, other things. Uh, so even just the plain old loot, uh, it has a history. Elixir. You won't get past me, sir. Do you know who we're hunting here? Don't try to take him out alone. But what if no one from the squad is around? Then try to make a lot of noise when you die. Medicinal Knock herbs. something over if you can. Bastard. I believe those herbs are, uh, I think, nettles. Is what, what they are. It smells like a dead weeper in here. Tired yet? Psh. I was gonna show a, a drop, drop assassination, but uh, we're doing mostly uh, non-lethal ones. So it's amazing how easily you can sneak up behind these guys. sure if I want to choke these guys out or just go right past. Mm, the AI in this game is not great, but the guards do ah, often have these paths passes. where they're, they're within each other's sort of vision, so you can't take one out without the other seeing, except for maybe a, a short period where they're not looking at each other. Eh. Just let him go. <laughs> so if you um, you choke someone out, you set them down near a place where they can be attacked by rats. They will often just get eaten by the rats, even though you didn't kill them. It'll count as a kill against you. So sometimes you gotta be creative with where you stash unconscious bodies. Let's go over to this little this little area here. Bash through the, the wood. A little bit little bit of loot. And if you actually go up here to the top, there's a little bit of an extra stash of stuff you can take money. And I think there's a... Oh, right, here it is. Dead Hermit's Note. It's here by the Renhaven. I'll make my last home. It stinks to the void, but my grandmom's hagfish stew will drive the odor away. I remember sailing out on this river to the great ocean, that vast blinding light and blue water. I was a tender fifteen, and our nets were always full to bursting. The old days, before everything went to shit. Anyway it goes, it's either the boots of the watch against my skull, the teeth of the rats on my bones, or the trembles of the plague all over my skin. Don't matter none to me. Very cheerful world we're in. Something weird. Alerted, but not detected. It's amazing we have electrified rail in this game, but not flushing toilets. Some plague victims we see here in their death shrouds, blood coming from the eyes. That's uh, what the plague does to you. And we finally reach Samuel. Quickly, I'm a friend. I'm Samuel. And I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. Well, they said you'd come out here. But I can still hardly believe it. I'll take you to meet them. Just down the river from here. Look around Hold if on you a bit. need. A little bit of an error there. It's actually up river from where long. you come out. Um, up, right across the river there is a, a location that you visit uh, very late in the game. 
So here's another whaling ship, now with a whale attached. So that's how they transport the whales. They harvest them while they're still alive. They extract the oil while they're still alive. It's a pretty, pretty gruesome thing. A little bit of a trivia about this, this river. On the map of the game, in the first game, it runs east to, to west, or rather it runs west to east. And there was some question about whether it actually did that or whether it ran north to south. And the map compass was just oriented differently for convenience on the screen. Um, but we still don't know exactly which direction the Renhaven River runs. Get in. It makes more sense to go north to south if you look at other maps waiting for you. of the Isle. But it's kind of a, an open question. All right, let's go. And there we have the first mission. No kills, no detections. Very nice. So, yeah, if you um, found this video interesting, uh, if it gets enough views or likes, maybe I'll do another one. It wasn't easy. This is the first time I've done anything like this. So, uh, uh, let me know. Thanks a lot.